In this video, we are talking about what's going on in the NFT markets and some major plays when it comes to taking NFTs to the mainstream. So recently, Pudgy Payments have made some major announcements in their strategy when it comes to moving the Web3 space forward, and that's actually selling product into Web2. They are releasing some of their first toys, which they have licensed from their own holders, meaning that they paid their holders money in order to use their Pudgy Payment in these toys, and now they are selling in stores. So when you go on Amazon, for example, you're gonna see like figures, slushy, all sorts of toys like this, right? So I mean, the toys itself, you definitely have seen it before, but it looks pretty good, and when you scroll down into to the bestseller rank. Apparently, it's the 4,388th best-selling toys and games, 78 in play figures and play sets. But you know, it's a little unclear on like how many toys you need to actually hit these because maybe sometimes it doesn't really take that much. For example, if you want to be an Amazon best-selling book author, uh, there's really ways to gamify that and to get to rank number one. But still, having some kind of ranking and using it as social proof on Twitter to get people more bullish on pudgy paywings, that's always a plus, right? We don't know the real numbers, but uh, it's better than nothing. So essentially, the toys are going to be priced around like $9 to $25. $5, so it's going to be something that most people can afford. Typically, parents are going to be the ones buying it for their children. So the toys aren't necessarily meant for adults, right? Even though the holders are adults, they're meant for children who are going to be buying things like this, right? So when it's categorized on Amazon, these are essentially their competitors in that space, depending on if it's a plushie, a figurine, some kind of play set. And what's interesting about this is that they're kind of using like these inexpensive toys as a gateway to get people into NFTs. They made a whole video about explaining everything that's going on with this, but I'll kind of give you like the down low real quick. So basically when you buy the toy, you're going to be able to scan. It's going to come with this certificate. So you're like adopting a penguin. And then from there, you're going to get a birth certificate that unlocks a unique trait box for season one pudgy penguins. Inside the box, there's going to be different rarities from common to epic, which you can use those traits as NFTs, right? And you could apply it into your pudgy penguin. And then somehow those are gonna to relate to some of the mini games that they're gonna have in the future. I think they have like chess right now and they plan to have more games like that. You also have an opportunity to create your forever pudgy penguin, which I believe you get from buying the toy. And it's gonna be a soul bound NFT. So you can't trade it, but the traits that you get from the box are tradable. So what people are kind of doing is they're buying the toy, they have the forever pudgy penguin, and then they can sell the traits. So I saw an interesting tweet from Luca, you could buy a toy for $20 and then some of the digital traits are worth $25 so that if you buy the toy, you can get the trade, then you sell the trade, then you make a $5 profit, right? Of course, you're not gonna make money on every toy that you buy. It's like similar to buying a, a Pokemon booster pack, right? Sometimes you get a rare one, you can sell it and then get a return on investment. Sometimes you lose money, right? But then at the end of the day, you still got the card, so it's a consumable, right? So they kind of gamified the whole toy buying experience, right? So adults who can buy a bunch of these toys, maybe they wanna hope play that game where it's like buying boxes of booster packs and hoping they get lucky and they're able to sell the traits for more money than they bought the boxes for. And at the same time, since they're going to get the toy, you never really lose because you're paying $20 for the toy itself, which that's the consumable that you buy that you can give to a kid, or maybe you can donate it or whatever the case is, or maybe you can collect it and then resell it in the future because the collectible markets, right? There's a lot of adults that buy Barbies, Hot Wheels, anime figurines, right? There's a whole market for people that want to collect anyway. So if Pudgy Pan was able to figure out this whole side of like getting adults to buy because they want to collect it and get the traits and maybe resell it and also getting kids to buy because they enjoy the penguin then that's a pretty big push forward in the Web3 space. For the Penguin itself, it's interesting because I feel like from a direct response marketing, meaning that when somebody sees it on Amazon, there's a high chance they're gonna buy it, right? So like, for example, Pudgy Penguins right now, it's number 12 on the best sellers for a toddler and stuffed animals. Again, I don't know how many sales it takes to actually get on this page and whether they track by day, or month, year, right? But you can see the stuff like Winnie the Pooh, Buzz Lightyear and things like that. So number 12 is not bad. I'm pretty sure for a lot of people, when they see this Penguin, they're gonna like the Penguin. They don't even know what NFTs are. They don't know who Luca Nets is and they might buy it. The design of Pudgy Penguin, it's one that I feel like if a kid saw it, they might be wanting to buy it without having to see a movie. For something like Lilo and Stitch, Winnie the Pooh, Buzz Lightyear, yeah, they're gonna see some movies or TV shows and then they're gonna be encouraged to buy it. I mean, the design itself of Winnie the Pooh is cute. So when there's animation involved in that, that's also marketing that adds fuel to the fire. Right now, Pudgy Penguin doesn't necessarily have the fuel quite yet because there's no like TV show out or like webtoon or something like that that kids are actively reading, from my understanding, but people can still buy. I feel like if they're able to get people to buy it without knowing what a pudgy penguin is, and then from there, if they're able to build good IP, which is itself very difficult, they may have something special on their hands, right? And this is interesting because like when you compare it to like, let's say anime figurine sales, a lot of times for an anime, it's really just marketing for companies to sell merchandise, right? At least figurines and plushies and things like that. But if the anime doesn't pop off, then it's possible that no one's going to buy the merch. If you're able to sell the merch without having like a show, then that means your product is really strong. And then if you 
have a show on top of that, then you're gonna sell a lot of toys, right? It's a pretty like impressive move that Pudgy is able to capture the attention of adults and NFTs at the same time sell product to a younger audience, which is kind of like uh, pretty innovative, I would say, in the NFT space right now. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is going to be Azuki. Azuki recently launched this thing called the Azuki Community Page, which is essentially just getting all the DAOs or organizations that formed around Azuki. It's kind of like a place where people to like see what all the communities are within the Azuki community, right? Like for example, let's say, you know, you're gonna go to Japan, like I'm going to Japan to Kyoto next month actually. And so if I wanna connect with anyone in the in Japan who has an Azuki, I can click here, find their Twitter page or Discord page and get connected with people who are in the Azuki community and it's easy as that. So there's gonna be different communities talking about different things like the Watch Club, Bay Area Club and things like that. So it's not a technical innovation per se, but it's just like a community innovation in that they just wanna highlight people who are actively trying to build on top of Azuki. And if you think about it, the value of an Azuki is really the, the people who have an Azuki. It's kind of like having a Rolex when everybody else has a Rolex. So it would make sense that they're doing this. But yeah, I mean, if you wanna check it out, feel free to. All right, next piece of news that we have is actually related to NFTs, but related to crypto in general, and that's gonna be Ledger. So recently Ledger is coming out with this new feature where you're able to store your recovery phrase, I guess like using their software, then it kind of like stores like keys in three different places. And then you, if you ever lose your key or whatever, you can like get all the pieces together and then get access to your wallet again, right? The challenge here or the problem that people have is that the fact that this feature is available and we're not gonna get into the, the whole technical details, but the fact that you can do this means that Ledger can potentially can backdoor your Ledger. So basically, even if they don't have your key, they're still able to get in with some of the firmware that they can create. And then when we're looking at some of the responses, they said like, hey, if you are a recovery user, meaning that new feature that they came out with, you have your shard into a safeguard in third parties, then yes, a government could subpoena them and get access to your funds, which is very anti-crypto. So, you know, the whole point is that, you know, your keys, your wallet, but if you're using this feature, then the government can get into your funds, which is uh, very scary for a lot of people. So yeah, so there's this whole controversy of like, hey, is it safe to actually use a ledger? Can ledger get into your wallet at any time? Can they update your firmware without you knowing and get access to your funds, right? And so that's gonna be a very interesting case for anyone using crypto wallets. So there's not a definite conclusion of what the next move is. Like, should you go on treasure? Is there an alternative? So I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens, right? All right, so with that said, that's everything we gotta cover for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next one.